All right, let's see what this 365 DNI has to offer. That's enough of Netflix today. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to JBuck Studios, your home for reviews, reactions, and ridiculousness. Anyways, though, it's Sunday, and Netflix doesn't usually drop new releases on Sunday, but I was able to check out the new romance erotica film, 365 DNI, aka 365 Days. A Sicilian mafia don kidnaps an attractive sales director, giving her 365 days to fall in love with him. So does this new Netflix erotica film very much rival the Fifty Shades franchise? Let's find out. But before I get into my thoughts, let me know what you guys thought of 365 DNI. If you've already seen this one or now, very much looking forward to it. Now let's get into some of the good. So right off the bat, I'm going to compare this movie to the Fifty Shades of Grey franchise because I believe both of them are based on romance erotica novels, then brought to the big screen. But they're is a lot of similarities to this where it's lavish lifestyle, a woman that's maybe in over her head, and then a guy that is very much sexually aggressive, followed by a lot of softcore porn. Honestly, in this film, like this is a very erotic filled movie, but I will say that this has a lot of pop music, it has a lot of lavish lifestyle, it has a lot of shopping trips, fancy cars, uh, yachts, uh, vacation spots, like anything and everything that I kind of maybe pointed at positives in the Fifty Shades franchise that some people might like of this luxury porn, if you will, is present again in this movie. But then also, they took a lot, maybe they got lucky, but they did a lot of great things with lighting, I would say. A lot of sunlight coming through, neon lights, um, the, the almost twilight or moon blue tones. Um, a lot of the scenes, I thought, were well lit, and they looked pretty. I mean, I wouldn't say that that is going to bring this movie over the top for one to check out, but I thought that a lot of the scenes, especially some club scenes with those neon lights, or maybe an erotic scene that is highlighted by neon blues or pinks, was very, you know, it set the tone for this movie. But finally, I gotta say, this movie is hot. Like, there is some hot, steamy sex and filthy stuff and outfits and lingerie and uh, boats and everything in this movie. Like, this is Fifty Shades, but upped a little bit for that Netflix platform. Like, my god, if you're looking for a hot movie, this has got sex up the wazoo in this movie. However, I'm going to reel it back a little bit on that hotness scale because a few things are a little, I would say, problematic, especially in today's culture. Like, the main, kind of almost, you break this story down, it's the story of Beauty and the Beast. You know, this guy who is aggressive, he is a gangster, he's very much a bad person when you really boil it down. And then this girl that is very much almost kidnapped, actually she is kidnapped, and forced into almost this relationship, or almost, uh, what do you call it when you're uh, kidnapped and you're trying to get in with the person? <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome, there we go. So yeah, she very much falls victim to Stockholm Syndrome almost. I mean, she does fall in love with him, but yes, it is very problematic because she is very much being forced into the situation she is going for. I mean, they're going for a romance, an erotica filmed, filled film, um, which it is. But when you boil it down and look at kind of how she got into that situation, how he is treating her, it is very bad. He is very much abusive. He is forcing her into things. He is doing things to make her jealous. Like, this is very much hitting on Me Too, things that people shouldn't be doing, forceful into sexual acts. You got to get consent. You got to get consent. So, I mean, believe me, this is hot-filled movie but a lot of it is problematic. And when we take the sheen of the sex and the lavish lifestyle, it does feel like it's a very hollow film. I mean, there mu isn't much substance. It's like, hey, you have these 365 days to essentially fall in love with this person, but that's about it. It is like, it's these filler scenes between these sexualized scenes into these filler scenes, and the performances from our two main people, my God, they are super hot. They are very attractive people, but I wouldn't say that they are very compelling. These aren't performances that are going to be memorable or, or anything. I mean, I will say that it does 
put this movie over the Fifty Shades of Grey franchise because these two have chemistry, or at least what it looks like, but none of it really elevates it into something that's going to blow up into this huge franchise and be something that people are really clamoring for, or, you know, you going into a movie theater and finding cucumbers laying on the ground. <laughs> Overall, 365 DNI is a hot, filled, erotica, maybe a little problematic, Netflix movie. With it featuring that luxury porn, some hot scenes, and some great lighting, but with problematic situations and plot, and it being a little bit hollow, I would probably skip out on this. I mean, if you're looking for a hot movie, you want to date, you want to set the mood, you want to get things going, jump in on it, but when you start diving into the details and boil it down, it's a very problematic movie, especially in today's culture. In closing, I'm going to give 365 DNI 1.8 out of 5 erotic novels. So what did you guys think of 365 DNI, aka 365 Days? I want to know in the comments down below. I believe that this is based on a franchise or a novel series, so we'll see if we get some more. Anyways, though, as always, thank you so much for watching. Watch some more videos up there or right over there. You know, brand new content every single week here on the JBuck Studios channel. I have no idea what's coming in the next couple days. So follow all of my social media, like this video, subscribe to the JBuck Studios channel, and until next time, we'll see you later.